Okay, that's my arrangement for uh, I Surrender All, written by Winfield S. Whedon. And I'm doing this lesson out here in my garage using my uh, little uh, perform so Fisher solo performance PA. And then I've been using, I, I got new toys, I got an LR Bags Para Acoustic DI, direct input. And I got a supernatural um, ambient verb using the plate reverb setting. So, those, I've upgraded my playing at church a little bit and uh, uh, got some new toys. So anyway, let's talk about this arrangement. This is not one that I usually use. I, this goes back to my Southern Baptist little boy music that I, I grew up with. But it, um, it really lays nicely on the guitar. It does two different things going on here. In the verses, it makes wonderful use of sixth, which is probably, I don't know, in my, it's my favorite interval on the guitar. So the notes are a sixth apart. So you're doing, you're playing six all the way through the first two lines here. And, and you can find this arrangement on my web, um, website. Go to Score Exchange and look up I Surrender All. I think it's under General Hymns. Um, so you're, you're kind of picking these six with your first and third fingers. And I do a lot of hammering on, which isn't written in there. That's how it's written. And the other thing to get through this first section is to play your G chord. Think of your G chord, like if you play your B7 here in the normal position, and then bring your, your second finger down to the the root of the G chord, which is the third fret of the sixth string, just move, shift that whole chord down. There you have a G7 on those five strings. You, the open first string you're going to use. So anyway, that's a handy chord figure. And you don't have to get it all down at once. So like in a, so at the start here, you're in a C chord, first measure. Bring these over, first and second finger over, and you can hammer on that. I do that later on in the arrangement. And then the second measure, you notice you have to have the third and fourth fingers down first. So just take your third and fourth, put them on to your fourth finger on the third fret of the second string, third finger on the third fret of the fourth string, and you don't need to have the whole chord down at once. You can put the two bass notes down, as you need them. So uh, if this chord change is new to you, then um, you can practice it. And then that's the same kind of finger picking pattern here, using the first and third fingers of the right hand to, to play the, the melody line with the, the sixth below an accompaniment. And then you're back to the C. First two beats of the fourth measure are on that G chord again. Don't necessarily need your first finger down on the B this time. You're not using it. So then to the C. And then it repeats. Let's see. And here I throw in the hammer on. Part's nice. Now, I should, probably should have given you a caveat at the beginning. If you don't know bar chords, um, you're not ready for this arrangement. Um, it does need one bar chord, but uh, you, you have to be able to uh, play bar chords well here. The second half is more difficult than the first half, but it has this nice cascading down from these high notes. Um, so at the end of the th second line there, I give you two open notes. The open third string and the open first string. 
And that gives you lots of time to get your left hand up here to play the short form of a C chord on the, uh, in, the, in the position where C is normally barred on the 7th fret, a major chord on the 7th fret. You're just going to play the short form without the bar. So, so the thumb and the third finger and the inner voices. And then you're going to slide on your second finger and bring your third finger around to get the... So you slide down from... Your second finger should be on the ninth fret right now. You're going to slide it down to the seventh fret and put your third finger down on the seventh fret of the first string. So... And you want to... To get the legato... You want... You want to get that... Keep that finger down and slide and try and keep some pressure on it so it keeps the note. That helps to tie that together. I should mention, part of the reason I'm getting a wonderful legato on this is because I am using this plate reverb unit that um, makes notes sort of sustain and creates you, <laughs> it lets you cheat a little bit and, and get a great legato when you, uh, a note I appear, I'll, will, uh, and then come down here and I have a let. Sounds like you're making the shift. So I just learned about this plate reverb um, this summer and uh, ran right out and got one. <laughs> I've been listening to guitars for years and wondering how they sound so good. Is it their guitar? No, I think it, a lot of it is, is the, uh, the effects. <laughs> Some of it, most of it's their hands and the guitar. Well, maybe even. I don't know, but I'm, I'm sounding like a little better guitarist these days now that I've discovered a new trick here. So where was it? I was back on measure nine. Um, and then, so you, what you're doing, you're going into this, this is part of the G chord, which is like if you took a D chord here, D, E, F, G. So you're slide going from C to G. And then you go to that F, Slide those two fingers down to the fifth fret and put your little finger in on the sixth fret of the second string for a little passing note. And then you slide down into an E minor, which is like a D minor, slid up here. Uh, and the little fingers, the little finger and the second finger stay where they are. The, third finger lifts up and you put your first finger down on the third fret as you slide down. And then you go into the G7. So now when you slide from this, the, notice the first, and you slide on your first and fourth fingers. And they're right there for a G7. And you bring your third finger over for the bass note on the sixth string, third fret. And then you get that bass part. When I was in high school, I used to sing bass in the choir in Archer's. So it goes, I surrender, I surrender all. That was my part. So it's kind of fun to get the, the bass part in there. So let's try that line again. Uh, you're coming off the open. So you get this nice cascading thing coming down in these treble sounds. And then the bass part comes in and it really sounds like a bass part because you haven't heard it for a moment. And then you get, uh, coming off at measure 10, the last three notes are all open, and you come up and you're back on this G chord here, but now you're doing it with your first and second fingers. You're playing just like a regular D chord slid up to the seventh fret. And then slide that down, two frets, first and second finger. And then go to your, and then slide on your second finger and put the third finger down on the fourth fret of the third string. And in the arrangement, I, ha I have you shifting to your first and second finger here, but I don't think it's necessary. I do that to make it easier to grab the C chord in measure 12, but everybody knows a C chord. And if you can't go from this to a C chord, then you're not ready for this arrangement either. So that second run, coming off these open notes, so this would be measure 9 to 11. And 
then measure 13. Let's look at measure 13. Um, you're playing now that now that we're doing we're doing tenths. The interval we've changed from sixths to an interval of tenth. For a joyful, joyful, we adore thee. That was all tense. Anyway, so we're going to run up tense now. And here's the shift right here in the, the between at the start of this third beat. You got to go from this first finger here to these notes here. So you got a little bit of a jump. You don't have to get. Then we're going into this F chord, kind of a cheating F chord that I like to use because. I'm too lazy to do it right. Never really learned to get that one quick. So uh, you've got your little finger on the fifth fret of the first string, and your first finger on the third fret of the fourth string. And then the, the middle voice is that C, which you're gonna grab with your third finger on the fifth fret of the third string. But you don't have to get that third finger down immediately. You just have to get the first and fourth fingers down. So if, 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 that's, if that's new to you, work on this little shift, because otherwise, if you don't get that legato, let me turn the reverb off. If you're, if you have that pause there, it's just not gonna sound real good. Put the reverb back on, because I just like hearing it. Anyway. And then measure 14, you get, you're coming off of measure 13 with an open uh, third string, eighth note. Uh, and it gives you a chance to bring your hand up here. And now you're gonna put in a full bar on the, well, almost full bar. You're not gonna use your little, well, it's a full bar, but you're not gonna use your little finger. You're gonna just, normally you play this chord like this, right? all four fingers, but you're going to leave your little finger float and bring your third finger down to the fourth string. And the reason, and this is different than how it's written here, okay, I, when I wrote this, what did I do? I went, I, that was awkward. Uh, and you can do that if you like, if, if you can't reach this stretch. But you got to be quick with your second finger, getting it here to keep the legato line going. Can't go. That wouldn't sound good. So, here what you do, you're gonna bring your little finger down to the 12th fret of the second string. And then, lift off, and you're gonna bring your, uh, lift off the bar, keep your little finger down, bring your third finger down to the 12th fret of the third string. So, now just that note, no bass note yet, and then put the third in, which is the little finger, or th third finger on the second string, third string, and pluck both those together, and then you hit the open bass, D bass, and then slide those two down. I probably won't go in and change my music right now because I just don't have time, but this is prettier because you can really milk these thirds um, if you're better guitarist than I am you might you can get some out going up and down with your vibrato but you can vibrato but you can still get a nice vibrato and if you go up and down too much because you're playing the fourth string you're going to mute it if you go up this way with your little thing, with your, the, the snail of your third finger will hit the fourth string and deaden it. So you might want to stay with the, the more classical vibrato. And then you slide right down to the... So, starting measure 14. You gotta be good on that. <laughs> Careful with the placement of the third finger. Mm -hmm. 
and, and, and coming off here, it's a natural place for a breath, so you can have that little. Just, you don't have to get, you don't have to get there super fast. I surrender all. I surrender all. So anyway, that's how that would work out for I surrender all. I think that's everything that I wanted to go over. Good luck with that one. That may stretch you a little bit if you're used to my easier arrangements. This does take you up the neck and has some little guitar tricks in there. But um, it's really a nice piece, especially the first part with the nice big fat sixth.